Welcome back to MathLit for the second term. We are going to continue from page 63 and the term's work is going to end on page 118. For those of you who have textbooks, you can use your textbooks that you bought. Otherwise, the work, I took photos of the pages and the pages are on the slideshow. So um, I know some of them aren't very clear, but Try and zoom in, try zoom in and zoom out to see what you can do. We are going to start today. We're going to start um, with the modules we're going to do in this term. This term, we're going to start with finance, and the finance is from page 63 up to page 92, and then we're going to do measurement from page 94 up until page 118. Now, some of the measurements. We already did in term one. So if it looks, um, if you recognize some of the work uh, under measurements, it's fine. But uh, that's a whole new chapter. Okay, let's start. Unit one is financial documents. The documents you're going to work with in uh, unit one is the following. We're going to do shipping, uh, shopping, do shopping documents. And those are toll slips and account statements. Now, guys, everybody of you know what a toll slip is. Most of you have, um, have went and bought groceries with your parents or you pay at the cafeteria at the, at the Sassel and you buy things, you get a toll slip. And account statements is um, how it's going to work. That is like if you go and buy from Edgar's and you've got an Edgar's account or Mr. Price clothing account, you buy on that account. And then they send you monthly statements to see what is the monthly payment you must do. Then the second document we're going to use is uh, household bills, and that is examples electricity bills, water bills, and telephone bills. So let's start with guys. Toll slips look like this. Most of you know it. And a toll slip is a receipt which serves as proof of payment for items purchased. So you get this the moment you buy the items and you pay for it. And a toll slip is a proof of payment. So if you walk out the door and someone asks if you paid for your products, you can show them your toll slip. Okay, and that, the toll slip also has a lot of information on it, like the date, the time, where you bought the items, and what items are that exempted and what are not. Now, guys, talking about that, you know, um, when it comes to this textbook, this textbook is a few years old. Please remember that when working in this textbook, when you do the homework activities and those type of things, work with 14% VAT. But you remember from last year, we the 14% moved up to 15%. So please just remember that. Okay. So let's continue. You'll see on till slip, there's all the information you can get from the till slip. So... That is what everything you can do. Just remember, guys, if you see this on a toll slip, those hashtag signs, sometimes it can be uh, uh, at sign or asterisk sign. Asterisk sign looks like a little cross. That indicates um, that exempted items. Okay, In this case, you'll see it's potatoes and jumbo eggs. So let's continue. There's a few examples, guys. There's a till slip. You'll see this guy was at KFC in Bryanston. And how they ask this type of questions is like... Um, um, they ask this type of questions like a comprehension test. You'll see consider the following till slip and answer the questions. What is the name of the store? You'll see it's KFC. Where is it located? And it's in Bryanston. What is the store's telephone number? Guys, you know, you'll see on the till slip... There's the store telephone number. If I can just underline it for you here. There's the store telephone number. And what what is the name of the person who served you? Now, you guys, you'll see there it says it was Irene. Okay. Now, it says what bank note did you pay with? The bank note, you'll see you paid cash. And the cash was 50 Rand. If it was a card payment, there, there's something will stand like a card payment and the exact amount would have been paid. You wouldn't have any change. 
Okay. So what is the total bill of this purchase? You will see it's 29 rand 80. There it is. Okay. And what was the amount of VAT charge on the bill? Now, if you add, you said it was a service charge, it was 2 rand. The subtotal was 27 rand 80. You deduct 27 rand 80 from this and you'll get your amount. Okay. Look there. It's 3 rand 41. Okay. So that's basically how it works with the toll slip. Guys, when you go to account statements, like I said earlier, account statements are example of Mr. Price home or Mr. Price clothing or Edgar's account or something like that. When you buy goods on an account at a shop, you buy them on credit and you pay for the goods at a later date over a period of time. Now, account statement is sent to clients on a regular basis, normally once a month. And it records all transactions showing purchases bought on credit, interest charged, the amount due, as well as all payments that have been made. It is also a receipt for money that was paid by you. Now, guys, most of you, you know, your mom, normally the women like uh, having accounts. So most of the girls in the class, or your, if you have a, um, your mother has an account, normally they will have something like this. Now, what is... An example, guys, what's very important is this terminology over here. This is very important. It says terminology. Let's just clear this out, please. Terminology um, in the context of account statement, what is important is the op opening balance. Now, opening balance, guys, is this thing over here. Okay. That's the balance. It's the one they start with. Okay. And you'll see his opening balance is 1,243 rand and 50 cents. Okay. So the closing balance is the amount owed at the end of the period. And the amount due is the minimum amount that is to be paid, often a percentage of the total amount owed. Now, debit and credit, guys, most uh, you know how debit and credit works. Debit is the amount of money that is owed by the client. Credit is the payments made by the client. Okay, remember here it's your statement. So you owe money, then it becomes the debit. You are the debitor, and if you paid money, that's the amount of credit. Okay, let's continue. Now here's other worked example, guys, the St. Matthew School. Now this is school statement, guys. Everybody has to pay school fees, and let's have a look here. You'll see what is this, um, who is responsible for the school account. Now you'll see it says to Mr. and Mrs. Ngobisi. Now that is the persons who are responsible for this account. And the second question is how much is due to the school, meaning you owe the money to the school. And you'll see the closing balance over there is 31 August 2011. The balance is 4000 33 rand and 55 cents. When must the money be paid? Okay, let's have a look. The money must be paid when? The 10th of September 2011. Let's have a look when, where it says that. State uh, account amount due and the payment due date. It says there, payment due date. Okay, so that's important. How much did the stationery cost? Now, guys, once again, I said this is like a comprehension. Go onto the description. You will see the stationery costs 103 rand and 55 cents. Now they're going to ask you what grade is the student in and explain how you know this. Now, guys, if you look at the, five, the 5th of August 2011, it says there's a grade 1 camp and that costs 380 rand. Now, obviously, you won't be in grade 7 if you go in a grade 1 camp. So this guy is in grade one because the grade one camp was on the description. Number six, have any payments already been made? If so, how much and when? Now do you, let's go to the credit, the credit section. Yeah, because remember, I need to pay on the credit section. Now, let's have a look. It was a payment of 3,550 Rand was done on the... 9th of August 2011. So guys, keeping with this financial statement, you'll see this is not that difficult. It is rather straightforward. 
and just use it as a comprehension test. It's not that difficult. When we go to household utilities and accounts, let's have a look. It says household utility accounts or bills is electricity, water, and telephone bills. Now, the following information can be found on a utility bill. The name of the person using the service, the address where the service has been used, meaning if it's at your house, your house address will stand there. If it's your telephone number, the telephone number will stand there. And the time of period for this use, meaning which month did you use it, and etc. Opening balance, the amount owed at the beginning of the period, meaning how much money you owed at the beginning of the month. If you made a payment, obviously the amount will be deducted. And the closing balance, the final amount at the end of the period. The closing, the closing balance can either be a credit balance or debit balance. If it's a credit balance, okay, the amount paid in a previous account was more than the amount owed. That's why, for example, a lot of people do this with their credit cards. So they pay into the credit card more money that is actually owed. And so they know the first transaction that they use a credit card for is actually their own money and not the bank's money. So that's the credit balance. If it's a debit balance, the amount paid on a previous account was less than the amount owed. Therefore, you still owe money on the previous account. Okay. And just have a note there. Interest is charged on a debit balance over due date. Okay. Due date is the date by which the account must be paid. The tariff is the rate charged for the service. Okay. This guy's this tariff. We're going to do tariff systems later on, but just uh, a heads up. Tariff systems are very important. You're going to do this in grade 10, grade 11, and in grade 12. And the guys in grade 11 are struggling with it because they didn't pay attention in grade 10. So just make a, a knot in your ear for tariff systems that's coming up. Okay. And the VAT, guys, everybody knows that is 15% in South Africa now, not 14% anymore. Here's a few examples, guys. Study, the, uh, study an extract of a telephone bill below and answer the questions that follow. Okay. Now let's have a look at the period invoice. The balance brought forward is 482 cents. Okay. How much money was uh, the account for? What is the opening balance on this invoice? It was 100 rand. Let's have a look there. It says opening balance there. I know it's a bit difficult to see, but it says there opening balance. And it says 100 rand. So my opening balance was 100 rand. Name the three different charges that make up the total bill. Now, guys, most of the time, you guys forget about this one. Okay. You'll see there it says rental. There the dot. It says rental. There it says usage. Now, normally, guys, before you got introduced to cell phones, when I was still a kid, you used to have a landline. These days, a landline for you is what you play your internet games over. A landline was what you used to uh, call people with. We didn't have cell phones when I was growing up. So you had a fixed rental that you had to pay to get that line. Okay. Even if you didn't phone anyone for that month, you still had to rent that line for 126 rand and 87 cents. Now your usage is what everybody is used to. The amount of SMSs you send or the amount, amount of minutes you call or your data, that comes to 114 rand and 23 cents. And then your VAT. Please remember your VAT. Those are the three things that have to come in. And that gives you a total of 274 rand and 85 cents. Okay. Now it says when, when is the due date for, the, for this payment? And you'll see here the due date will be on this side over here. Okay, it says due date, 6 June 2012. So guys, it's not, it's not that difficult. You can go on. Now we're going to come to the most important thing, guys. Doesn't mean you're on lockdown, you don't get homework. So your homework is as follows. For those of you who have textbooks, it is the test your understanding on page 66 to page 68, number one to four. Now, guys, it's very important that you do this to make sure that you understand the work. Okay, for the guys that don't have textbooks that I normally make copies for, 
the slides uh, of the papers are included into the slides following this one. So good luck and uh, do your homework and I'll see you hopefully within a few days to give you another another chapter for, for, for math. Enjoy, enjoy your day guys. Bye.